Welcome back, everybody, to some more Grand Tactician, the Civil War. Sorry it's taken a little bit extra time to get to this video. I've been hard at work on the tutorial videos. I'll be submitting those first two to the developer uh, this week, uh, and then I'll be getting some information on making the ones uh, after that. So uh, it's taken a lot more work than I expected it would, but we want them to be done right for the game. So we're going to continue on with this Confederate campaign. I feel like we might be in the home stretch of this unless the Union suddenly gets some more men because we've got a pretty substantial advantage in manpower at this point. Uh, I do have one new patron unit to add, and there it is right there. It's going to be in uh, Johnston's uh, core. Uh, actually, I should say it's in Johnston's co core of Johnston's army of Mississippi. Uh, it's going to be in Dance's, uh, Dance's division. Uh, it's the Fort Gary horse. So thank you for that. And uh, we will be starting to collect information from everyone who is a patron uh, at the captain level on up for the next campaign, which is going to be a union campaign. And that's going to be a live stream campaign. So all episodes of that are going to be live streamed. I think that'll be fun. It'll mix it up a little bit and uh, it should be a fun experience for all of us. So I'll be posting about that soon to start collecting all of the patrons requests for those brigades in that live stream campaign. But let's go ahead and continue on with this one. All right, so almost immediately we've got ourselves uh, a combat situation uh, over in Illinois once again. I want to see how many men they've got. This is Morgan's Command, 816 men. Uh, it's the second core of the Army of the Potomac. Uh, so they've got some reinforcements all pretty close. So this is going to be interesting to see how this all shakes out because this could start out as a really small battle that very quickly turns into a large one. Okay, well, it looks like the second corps is not getting any reinforcements, and neither am I. So this is going to be just about the, the troops that are already on the field, which means I've got a pretty substantial advantage. This is an opportunity to defeat an army uh, and have it not be an issue for me in the West anymore. Well, I moved into the area around Bull Run Creek here, and it seems he's headed south. He just took Blackburn's Ford, uh, and now McLean as well, so we're going to start shifting that way. I'm going to send my cavalry division down here uh, and then we'll send the other units around and see if we can maybe figure out a good place to find and destroy him. All right, here we go. So we've got him coming up from this side. My artillery got there first, which is not necessarily the best thing in the world. So we'll, we'll start moving our cavalry into line over here. Um, we'll bring our, our infantry down this way. McCulloch was headed for Blackburn's Ford, but I'm going to redeploy him over here. You can see here uh, that when you hover over the place where it says indecisive, um, it tells you based on the victory points, based on routes and losses, how it all calculates who's winning the battle and things like that. So that's something to keep an eye on as we go about this. Now let's go ahead and take a look and see how things are in the battlefield right now. Had the sound turned off. Here we go. All right, so our artillery is getting into position. They're opening up. We've got a nice open battlefield here, which is nice. As long as he doesn't charge into my artillery before I get a chance to get these guys into position. I'm going to throw McIntosh's brigade over here and let the other two come in on this side. Alright, Price, get your boys down there in a hurry. Here's the 25th Texas Cavalry. Actually, going to get them dismounted. The problem is now they're right in the way of the artillery, so that they're not going to be able to fire. So let's move them down this way. We'll get the Shelby Iron Brigade right over here. Alright, this is going to be a chance to crush these guys. Alright, Missouri Bushwhackers, they're going to come in right here. We're 
still blocking that artillery. Looks like they're they're moving all their guys across island forward. We got more artillery coming down this way too. So let's go ahead and get Randolph to move his whole division. I don't know, say right here. Get him out of the way of the artillery. Let's move this artillery up. So right here we've got MSG artillery. They've got 12 pounders. I actually want to move them up. Let's try that again. There we go. 12 pounder Whitworth's here. As soon as I get these guys out of the way, I can get McCulloch's 12 pounder Napoleon's going. We're still waiting on our infantry. Price is almost there. Gonna come in right on the Yankee flank. Not sure why we haven't gotten our orders to move the cavalry yet. Our army commander's over here on this side. Randolph, get them all moved over there, please. Can have a ton of artillery firing on this guy now. That's just got to be brutal for them on the field. Let's see how we're doing on casualties inflicted so far. So our infantry's inflicted. 351 casualties. I'm not sure where. Artillery's inflicted 50 so far. There they go. Alright, I'm going to speed things up a little bit. so my units can get into position. So now he's shifting based on what I'm doing. But he's shifting based on me being at his front here. And he's not really accounting for the two divisions of infantry I've got coming up behind him and on his right. Okay, now my, all my artillery's firing. Cavalry's right where I want them. So let's go ahead and move them up. We'll wait for the artillery to, or the uh, infantry to finish moving into position. Now he's starting to shift to adjust to the new threat. Got him trapped. I mean, he'll probably escape, but we've got him in a good spot. Missouri Black Guard has engaged. Got the Fayetteville Light Infantry here. Oregon Volunteers, move them up. We're still waiting on. Let's see, 2nd Battalion, 137th Infantry right there. And the King's Own Regiment's gonna come in on that side. A ton of artillery firing right here. This is great. What's going on here?
Casualties are going to be very one-sided in this fight, I would imagine. It's 100 to 700 so far. Artillery's starting to rack up some kills. Alright, we need McCulloch to move up because right now he's still facing this way. I gave them orders to move up, but they haven't done it. probably going to take a while. I may not actually be able to get those orders through because the army commander's on that side. So what we'll have to do is if we order the brigades individually, that order will come from the division commander. That we can do. Instead of ordering the division which has to come from the corps commander who's on the other side. I'm still not entirely sure what my cavalry's doing at the moment. Move forward, please. starting to engage with the infantry. Our Oregon volunteers right there. giving the whole division an order again. See if that works. Infantry's doing really well, though. And we don't have any... Well, we do have a, a feud over here. because he keeps pulling back. No, 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 no. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Randall back behind the other ones. He's showing unstable because they're very tired anyway. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. Six to one casualty rate. The battle's starting to shift the other way now. Let's see what that's based on. So we hold some objectives, so does he. His morale's still higher than mine, and I think part of that's probably because we're behind enemy lines. We're up in Illinois. Um, He's starting to suffer some routes. We'll see that morale go down further and further all the time until eventually our morale will pass his. We also have to remember that the way the settings are on this campaign, his morale is pretty much always going to be higher than mine because I maxed out the, the difficulty settings and part of that affects morale. Pretty easy to tell where the King's Own Regiment is on the field, just looking at those uniforms. Now we gotta keep pushing forward. And I gotta 
get their orders to change so that they'll fire from that distance. My cavalry will not advance. And it's killing my whole strategy here because I could be hitting them from both sides. We are starting to break his units though, and I think a lot of that's coming from my artillery. Because it's certainly not coming from the attacks. guys are supposed to be pulling back. So I'm going to move Missouri Black Guard up in front of them. Alright, it's starting to shift my direction now. Morales dropped to 47. He's taking hits from uh, from routes and from losses. seeing more of his units breaking. Really not a lot else for me to do, so I'm just going to kind of sit tight. Let the speed, let the game time speed up a little bit. Well, one of my cavalry brigades moved forward, that was it. heavily in my direction now. It's a minor victory if it ends. His morale's dropped to my level, but losses and routes are what are really killing him. I think we'll just shoot it out right here. Alright, the enemy's retreating. It's going to be a major victory for me. All right, we only lost 723 men, inflicted 6,000 casualties. That was really, really well done. And those are the kind of victories that are going to lead, I think, to the end of the war in the next few months, I'm guessing. But we'll see. All right, so my financial situation is not good. We are $1.5 billion in debt. We have a CCC plus credit rating. Uh, but we're going to max out diplomacy and... Um, also agriculture subsidies because I feel like those are the two things that will help with European intervention which I think can more quickly bring an end to this war. We're also going to continue moving on Washington and hopefully take that very soon. Alright so the Yankees are now pulling back over here in Kentucky so I think this is probably our moment to go ahead and start moving forward. So we're going to move the first core up here. I believe the second core is also there. So we'll get both of them moving. We're waiting on the third core to move back into Tennessee. It's taken a while for that to happen. Not sure why we lost Fort Stevens again, but we're in the process of taking Washington right now. We've got the first and second core in position for that. Third Corps, I'm going to kind of hang tight back here, just north of the Rappahannock River, just in case. All right, here we go. Do we take DC? If we didn't, we're about to. Well, look at that. Lincoln loses the elections. I don't know 
why he's losing an election now because there's no election in 1863 but a democrat elected president confederates congratulate the winner davis willing to enter negotiations the war about to end so i think that's because we've taken washington so let's go ahead and press the advantage we're going to move the third corps up We may not actually get to see French intervention because we're going to probably win the war first. Victory at McHenry. Fort McHenry Garrison over in Baltimore has fallen. Where's his morale at at this point? His national morale is still at 49, though. It needs to drop below 25 in order for the war to end. You can see his morale of armies is still fantastic, and that's in due in no small part to the settings that we've used. All right, there's Diplomacy 5. That's uh, something we started working on in the last episode. It only ticked French intervention up to 66%, though. It didn't really do much at all. I'm waiting to see if Robert E. Lee's army outside Pittsburgh is going to go to battle with the 4th Corps. I think it's about to. Here we go. I don't know what the numbers look like. I know Lee's only got 11,500 men, so we might be outnumbered here. Well, I don't know what happened, but we entered the battle with some pretty bad morale, and it instantly caused us to break, probably because we're kind of isolated and behind enemy lines, so it looks like Lee's going to fall back to West Virginia now, which isn't a huge deal. Uh, this is kind of a minor distraction from the main areas where the battlefields are going to decide the war. Well, what is this? French intervention possible. Napoleon the III thanks the Confederacy. Uh, re French reinforcements on the way. I don't know if that means... Oh, Ironclad Normandy sighted. Hopes high in the Confederacy. So are they sending me... some naval support? Union National supports at 87 still. Their army supports at 49. Robert E. Lee has retreated to Winchester, and he's actually coming down this way now. I'm going to send Longstreet's Corps. He's going up into Baltimore, and then he's going to head over to Frederick to try and hit the Army of the Potomac's 3rd Corps. He outnumbers them about 3 to 1. All right, so we're going to have a battle here on the Winchester battlefield, and it's actually the Battle of Winchester, so that works out nicely. Uh, it's just Robert E. Lee's troops facing off against the Union Corps, and again, Lee's troops are nervous... Their morale is pretty poor. I'm hoping it stabilizes uh, before we get too far into this battle. Because we might have some issues here. We're already showing as a minor defeat even before anything happens. You can see how low the morale is uh, of our troops. So we're going to have to find a good defensive position and then inflict some casualties. The problem is a lot of the objectives are pretty far out in front of us. So we're going to have to take a few of those, or we may end up falling back before too long. Well, somehow we found ourselves, we find ourselves completely surrounded here. I don't know how in the world he got his men all the way around my entire division without me seeing it earlier. That's exactly what has happened here. Now, the funny part is, I don't think he outnumbers us on the field. Oh, he's got 25,000 men now. He got reinforcements. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is not going to end well. We're going to have to pull Russell back as quickly as possible. And I'm going to do that at the brigade level because if we send an order to the division, it's going to have to come from Lee over to Russell. And that's just not going to happen. we got to try and pull these guys back as quickly as we can. Uh, okay, that ended badly and looks like we lost somebody surrendered too. Dang, that was brutal. Absolutely brutal. Alright, so we're going to move the Army of Tennessee up into southern Kentucky now. We're, st we're continuing to have these battles being fought in the uh, area around D.C. and uh, 
Longstreet's Third Corps has actually defeated a couple of Confederate forces. I, I had them set to defensive, and so they were auto-resolving those battles. That's why I haven't actually gotten to fight them. But I believe he's defeated both the Fourth Corps and the Third Corps of the Union. Um, we're going to try to stabilize things here around D.C. and then try to spread out a little bit. I want Longstreet to try to deal with those guys around Winchester while we give Lee's army a chance to recover. Yeah, this keeps going back and forth with Fort Stanton for some reason. Fort Stanton and Fort Stevens over and over again keep fighting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to drop some troops into Fort Stevens so that we don't keep having this issue of taking it, losing it, taking it, and losing it. So I'm going to try to find some of my units that are not patron units to defend these forts from the various brigades. Here's Kennedy's brigade. That's one we can throw in there. I also dropped in some artillery. So at least to start, this will give the Fort Stevens garrison about 5,000 men, which is about their max capacity anyway. It's going to take a day for that to happen, but not a big deal. And then once we retake Fort Stanton, we'll do the same thing. All right, we uh, have gone ahead and put a few units in Fort McHenry. I've retaken Fort Stanton, so I'm going to do the same thing there. We'll have to do the same thing in Fort Washington. We're going to hold all of those forts, and then I'll probably recruit some more um, units to get them into the armies because I've got a lot of available conscripts so that'll help with that and I think we'll start building up those forts so he can't keep taking them back and, and this will become kind of a non-issue. The nice thing is we've got 25,000 draftees available in Maryland as well as 2,900 volunteers uh, so it's actually going to be pretty easy for us to be able to get quick reinforcements to these forts. In fact let's see how long it'll take I was going to take one day at Fort McHenry. Fort Stevens, we've already got. Let's get Fort Washington. I'm not going to take any more from my armies. I'm going to go ahead and start doing this from Maryland draftees. So we'll throw a couple of brigades of Maryland draftees in there. They're going to take 20 days. I don't know why that one's going to take 20 days when the last ones didn't, but that's okay. All right, well, I had the Army of the West set to defensive, and they got overwhelmed by a number of armies. So they're pulling back to St. Louis, but that's totally fine. And we keep going back and forth. I can't get my reinforcements into these forts in time because by the time that happens, they end up taking them back. So these forts keep switching hands over and over and over again. So what I've got to do is I've got to load up all of my forces in there and make sure that I've got them in a place where they're going to be able to hold these forts without any more issues. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to wrap it up right there. I know it's another short episode, but I've got a lot of work to do on these tutorial videos. I want to make sure that I get them in. So let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. We will be back the day after tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching.